Hey guys, Richard Blade here. Thanks for stopping by my easy cooking channel tonight. You know what? Tonight I'm going to give myself a rest and I'm going to give you guys a rest. I'm not going to cook anything tonight. Um, as of the last two weeks, I've been bombarded with requests to do another sharpening video. And as of late, I've been watching a lot of guys on YouTube doing a lot of sharpening videos in the realm of survival called bushcraft, which is something I do, which is something I've been doing for the last 25 years, is bushcrafting skills. And to me, one of the most important things there is in the field is your knife. As a matter of fact, the United States military, back when my dad was in the service, they used to teach a very simple lesson. They used to say, your knife was your best friend. Not your firearm, your knife. Okay, because an empty firearm is just a paperweight and you can't survive with a paperweight. But with a knife, okay, you can survive, okay? So I've been watching some of these bushcraft guys and I noticed that some of them were doing bushcraft sharpening like um, at something called base camp and they would take their scandy ground knife like this mora and they would sharpen it okay using six or seven Japanese water stones soaking in a tub of one to two gallons of water which is your most important resource out there in the field okay this is not what I do in bushcraft okay when I do bushcraft bushcraft is a set of survival skills that you have and you go out on a one day, three day, five day hike and all of a sudden you get stranded, okay, but at least you have the skills to survive until there's a rescue. You don't have time to sit around with one or two gallons of water and six or seven Japanese water stones sharpening a scanty ground knife like this Mora, which I'm going to sharpen for you today, okay. That's not what bushcrafting is all about. Bushcraft is about survival. Bushcraft is about your tools and maintaining your tools in the field, okay? Then I noticed another bushcraft guy on YouTube who took a diamond rod and cut a secondary bevel into this scandy grind, which is not the correct way to sharpen this knife in the field, although in an emergency for somebody who doesn't know how to do sharpening, it's all fine and good as long as you can get a cutting edge, but it's not the correct way to handle the Scandinavian grind, okay? A lot of you out there are not familiar with the Scandi grind, and today I'm going to make you familiar with the Scandi grind. This is a Mora, okay? This is a Mora bushcraft knife. It is a Scandinavian grind. It's not a flat grind. It's not a hollow grind. It's not like any grind I've explained in previous sharpening videos, and today I'm going to teach you the proper, correct way to sharpen a Scandinavian ground knife, a Scandi grind, at home, okay, at home, okay. If somebody wants to make a request and say, please show me how to sharpen a Scandi grind knife in the field, I will do that. But today, today, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a Scandi ground knife in the home in preparation of taking a one, three, five, or ten day hike into the wilderness with a bush crafting knife and other tools that you might need. So as usual with YouTube, let's get going and I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so we're going to get going sharpening a Scandi ground knife. Now this is a brand new Scandi ground knife. This is a Mora, okay, a Mora bush craft knife. This is how the edge looks, brand new, okay. Now this is something that a lot of people are not familiar with, this type of edge, and that's okay. This is mine, okay? Okay, it's been used, it's been abused, okay? It has the same kind of grind, but I'm running my fingers on the edge and it's not cutting because it's been dulled up. So, I'm gonna show you how to sharpen this Mora knife on my diamond plate. Like I said, this is sharpening at home, this is not sharpening in the field, so let's get going, turn the page, and I'll start sharpening on this plate. Okay, so, here we go. All right. Now, a mora is very similar to other style knives. Okay. Um, there's no one way to really explain it, but a Scandi ground knife is probably, in my opinion, the best edge type there is in the field. Okay. There really isn't too many other edges. 
I would want in the field, okay? Um, it's strong, it's tough, it stays sharp for a long time. Let me show you a diagram of what a Scandi ground knife looks like, okay? Here's the spine of your knife, okay? Basically, here's your high flat, okay? And here's your primary grind, okay? It's a zero grind, all right? There's no secondary edge here, like on a flat grind. Okay, let me pull that up for you to see it. There's no secondary edge here, like on a flat grind or on a hollow grind. There's no secondary edge. This is a true saber. This is a true saber from, from the flat to the primary, okay? It's a zero grind. Now, some people like to cut a secondary edge or a micro bevel into the primary grind at the end of the sharpening. And they say that it makes this particular kind of grind stronger, but I'm not a big believer in that because when you cut a secondary bevel into the primary cutting edge of a Scandi, you're making it even thinner than it came from the factory. So that's not very strong at all. As a matter of fact, it thins it out and makes it weaker. Your average Scandi grind knife has a degree angle of 22 degrees or 11 on each side, 22 inclusive, but that's not Bible, okay? There are Scandi ground knives that are ground at 22 degrees, 25 degrees, even 30 degrees inclusive, okay? It just depends on the chore that you're doing. But in general terms, most of the Scandi knives you'll buy, if you buy a Mora like this, will be sharpened at 22 degrees, 11 on each side. Now, the thing I enjoy about a Scandi ground knife is that somebody with no sharpening experience can be taught how to sharpen this knife. And it's as easy as this. You lay the knife down perfectly flat, you press it down, okay? And then you reach for this center point where the high flat begins to grind down to your primary, okay? Which is very similar to a shinogi on a Japanese kitchen knife. But you lay the knife flat and then you press right here and there's your angle, okay? The trick is to maintain that angle so that when you're sharpening this knife, as you're drawing it across, okay, you don't raise your wrist as some people do when they sharpen knives. The idea is to keep this grind completely flat to the stone, okay? So you see my hand covering the edge, okay? And this is how you sharpen this kind of stone. Now. I usually keep a finger right in front of the blade, okay, right in front of the cutting edge because I'm not going to get cut, okay, because that cutting edge is on the stone. And I draw it across and I keep that edge nice and flat against the stone, okay. And right now I'm working on a 325 degree, uh, excuse me, 325 grit stone, okay. I'm not applying a lot of pressure, it's not necessary, but see how I keep the pressure on the blade, keeping the angle, okay, and you see how it's beginning to cut here, okay. It will cut from this shinogi, from the center point, after the high flat, after the high flat to your saber grind. So I'm going to continue sharpening at 325. <clears throat> Excuse me, until I've exposed enough metal to move on to the next grit, and we're going to get this puppy razor sharp. What you'll see if you watch a lot of guys on the tubes sharpening the Scandi, <coughs> excuse me, what you'll see with a lot of guys sharpening the Scandi here on the tubes, if you follow this, is that they will just run the blade along the stone, okay? to cover that shinogi down to the primary. You won't see them putting constant pressure on the blade or putting their finger in front of the edge. And that's really a mistake because you're not gonna get cut, but you will have a wonderfully sharpened blade. You're not gonna injure yourself one bit. Okay, so this is my technique for sharpening a Scandi at home Oh, extremely dry throat here in the desert. Excuse me, guys. Okay. Just remember, do not curve your wrist toward the point when you're sharpening this kind of knife. Okay. Keep your fingers 
There you go. Establish that, that angle from the center point, okay, from the high flat to the saber, okay, or from the shinogi, if you want to call it that. I call it that sometimes, okay, and you will have a wonderfully sharp edge. This knife is fairly dull. I've abused the hell out of it. It's been carbonized, and I'm going to continue sharpening at 325 degree, uh, 325 grit. I'm going to expose new metal, and when I'm done exposing new metal, we will move on to a higher grit. So stay tuned. And remember, with the diamond plates, okay, with the diamond plates, you don't need a lot of pressure, okay? The most important thing when sharpening Scandi knives or any other kind of knife is to make sure your stones are level. If your stones aren't level, then your angles will not come out correct. This is why I use diamond plates because the diamond plates are always level because the diamonds are impregnated into a sheet of nickel or some other form of steel depending on what brand you buy okay these stones will never gully they will never dish whereas other stones naturals and synthetics alike will gully and will dish okay you can buy correcting stones for them to keep them level but I'm not much into that kind of labor-intensive need. Today's diamond technology is easier on the blade than ever before. You don't need to push very hard. The diamonds are a number 10 on the Rockwell hardness scale. Okay, so it's going to cut, or excuse me, the diamonds will cut any kind of steel you put to it. Just remember, press your hands into that center point to keep that angle and I'll be back to get on to the next grit. Okay, so I got a lot of fresh surface, if you can see it, okay? Okay, it's pretty much sharp right now, guys. I mean, you know, it's almost there. But I'm gonna take it now to a 1200 grit diamond plate and refine the edge of the Scandi even further. And then I'm going to move on to about uh, 2,000 grit and then a 4,000 grit and we're going to be done. Just remember the trick is to keep the blade and the angle flat to the stone by pressing from the center point, okay, what I call a shinogi, because a Scandi grind it really is not that much different than the grind you'll find on a Japanese katana, which is also a zero grind, okay? And this 1200 grit is going to refine and polish. And if there's any burr left, I will lop it off at the end. But right now, we are working at a 1200 grit. This Scandi will be razor sharp when I am done. It's not always necessary. To have it razor sharp but it will be field grade sharp it will be able to cut most items and will be able to baton effectively in the field so another five or ten minutes and we'll move on to the next step okay guys I don't know if you can see it, but there's a whole lot of fresh surface, freshly exposed metal on the Scandi grind. I've been working on this 1200 grit for about 10 minutes, okay, and I got a nice little polish going on, okay, nice exposed metal. Now I don't believe in the micro bevel experiment, a lot of people say, Oh yeah, putting a micro bevel at the bottom makes the blade stronger, but you do get a little bit of a burr when sharpening a Scandi. And so I'm not going to put a micro bevel, but I am going to remove the little bit of a burr that you get on occasion when working with a Scandi. There we go. Oh yeah. I wish I had some fingernail left. Okay. Just a little bit of a burr. There we go. 
There we go. And I'm going to move on to about a 2,000 grit. Okay? I'm going to move on to about a 2,000 grit. And then we're going to go to 4,000 grit. So hang on tight. All right. So right now, I'm polishing up this Scandi ground knife, this Mora, on a 2,000 grit synthetic ceramic spider coat. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm polishing this edge down. Okay. Taking out any scratches that were in there. And I'm going to move on to a 4,000 grit in just a second or two. But what I would like you to see again is that I am handling the angle by pressing from the center down. This is how the angle of this knife gets maintained. Wonderful. And then I will raise it up just a little bit and cut any burr that comes onto the primary cutting edge. And matter-of-factly, many times with the Scandi, as you do sharpen it, it does form a burr. Now, like I said, I don't ascribe to the micro bevel, and I'm not putting a micro bevel, but I am removing a burr. Oh, yeah. There we go. Cutting just nice. All right. So I'm going to move on to the 4,000 grit Arkansas stone. And then we're done. All right. So, I'm finishing up the Scandi on my Surgical Black Arkansas, which is roughly a 4,000 grit, although Arkansas stones are noviculate and are rated by density. The density of a Surgical Black Arky is roughly 4,000 grit. Okay. So I'll finish up the Scandi grind on this Arky, roughly 4,000 grit, and yep, feels good, and I'm going to lop off a burr, because I do feel a burr, and then we're going to get to some paper cutting, okay? I wish I had some hair on my regular arm, but I don't but we'll do some paper okay guys there you have it okay the proper way to sharpen a scandinavian grind knife at home okay now, even though a scandy knife is about 11 degrees it doesn't mean that it's supposed to be a feather cutter okay but there it is 11 degrees okay not much different than a sushi knife okay not much different than a sushi knife this is magazine paper not printer paper, okay? Somebody asked me once to do magazine paper, so here's magazine paper, okay? It's not like printer paper. Here are the feathers. Oops. Okay? Here it goes. Ta -da. You don't always want your knife to be super razor sharp like this, okay? Because when a knife is super razor sharp, that means that you could lose the edge just that much quicker out in the field. Okay? But it's nice to have a sharp edge. Okay? But it's not always necessary to have a razor. Okay? So, as with this printer paper, as with this magazine paper that somebody asked me to do, and I, I, for the life of me, I, I can't remember who it was that said, do magazine paper, because it's lighter. There's magazine paper, okay? So, Scandi grind. My favorite grind in the field. Okay, so there it is, Scandi grind. My favorite grind in the field, okay? You can't really get much sharper than that, guys, okay? This is how you sharpen a Scandi ground knife at home, okay? I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.